Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapsed version of a very comfortable looking dog in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy this. If you do, then please do have a look around my YouTube channel at some of my other content here. I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to me here on YouTube. And then if you can show me some further support, you can visit me on my Patreon channel where for a small monthly subscription, you'll get access to my full catalogue of real-time narrated tutorials to help you if you're looking to learn more about soft pastel. But I hope that you enjoy this speedy version. So for this piece, I'm using pastel matte paper. This is the sienna color of pastel matte. And I've really started enjoying this paper I've used it for quite a few projects now over the last couple of years and this one in particular is 16 by 12 inches so not too big but a lot of detail to squeeze into this piece as there's quite a complex background going on behind the dog and then quite a detailed type of fur to create on the dog himself but as always the first thing I usually tackle is the background and I work from background to foreground usually. So in this case, it was a matter of quite methodically working across the cushions, blocking in all the darkest areas first. And I like to do that so that that darker pigment doesn't dirty my lighter areas later on. So I get all of the dark pigment down first. Then it's much easier to add the clean pigment around that the lighter colours without it becoming very contaminated with the darker colours. So the cushions were a lovely part of this portrait to work on. I really enjoy painting fabrics and I love when a pet portrait has a background like this as it really gives it a, a time and a place and it shows the comfort level of the animal that uh, clearly enjoyed a lot of comfort throughout their lives. So I love when you get soft furnishings in pet portraits especially. Really shows off the pampered pooch and their lifestyle. So with this I pretty methodically worked across these squares just looking at the colour value of each square and how it's being affected by the light which is coming from the right of this. And I will go into more depth in some Patreon videos from this piece. My patrons over on my channel there have already requested that I go into some depth on these cushions in particular. So there will be some fully narrated and colour-coded tutorials to come from this part especially. I always like to share tips on backgrounds especially because there's already a lot of help out there for different types of fur and um, you can get a lot of help for different types of animals. But I find that the backgrounds are often overlooked and to me they can sometimes really make the painting. Uh, they certainly make the paintings very interesting given it that lovely setting. And that's something that I like to create a lot in my work. So I'll definitely go into more depth on this particular background. A very satisfying one to create and once you get to grips with the colour values, it's quite plain sailing once you start filling in all of the little squares. So it's deceivingly simple actually, it's not that difficult to create, but extremely effective I think. So I did spend quite a long time on just the cushions. That's the one thing about backgrounds. Expect to spend as much time on them as you're going to on the main subject sometimes. But I do find it quite enjoyable, so I don't mind devoting a lot of time to this part of the paintings. So as always, I'm using mostly unison soft pastels. I didn't really need any pastel pencil in this part, although you can see me pick up 
some of the pan pastel blending tools that really helps on pastel mat especially just to soften edges um, neaten things up you can really move the pigment around with those blenders but at this stage just trying to go for a more painterly look to the background avoiding picking up any pencil just keeping it all with the bigger sticks and then doing a little bit of neatening up with those soft sponge blenders but yet quite a lot of time spent on just the background and it really was a lovely photo reference to work on the dog's name is Jimmy and he just looks like such a pampered pooch and he's got such a lovely expression in this shot he looks like a, a wise old guru that you might wake up to give you some advice and that's what I really wanted to capture his lovely expression Jimmy's humans who clearly took the photograph caught him in such a lovely moment one I'm sure most dog lovers recognize And I just loved his pose where he's got that one paw dangling over the front edge. It's a little bit like one of those tricks you use in a in a nice still life painting where you've got something actually protruding out of the foreground towards you. That's always a nice trick to include in a painting. Really gives it a sense of the 3D. So it definitely makes a big difference when you've got good photo reference to work from for a pet portrait. So the black and tan colours. I've already got quite a few tutorials on my Patreon channel all about black and tan. And especially with the shorter coats, you can see that the marks I'm making are quite small and quite short. Just trying to replicate the smoothness and the shine on the coat. But also making use of some lovely deep blues right through to the lighter blues to give a sense of the reflections on his coat. So usually when you're painting black fur, you're able to see lots of different colors getting reflected off that coat. And most commonly, Blues and purples are to be found on a black coat. So using some little bits of pastel pencil, especially around the eyes, and to neaten up certain parts of the fur. But the vast majority of this really is done with the soft sticks as they give the, the best strength of colour, the most amount of pigment comes from those. So I really like to get the main pigment down using the soft sticks. And then if I need to tweak that into place a little bit, I can always come in with the pastel pencils. But just working my way down his face, I often get asked how I keep my paintings so clean and not smudge lots of the pigment everywhere. But you can see that I've always got some blank paper here to lean my hand on by working from the top to the bottom. I've always got somewhere to lean my hand so I don't have to touch any other part of the painting. And also if you're using a proper pastel paper Pastel really isn't that messy. Of course, if you're just using a regular drawing paper, then the pastel goes everywhere. It's a total mess. But if you're using something like the velour paper or the pastel matte paper that I like, then it really holds on to the pigment and it doesn't just spread everywhere like a big mess. So if you're finding it hard to control and keep things neat and clean, Perhaps you need to try a different paper. But definitely for the small detail, 
for really refined detail like in this piece. I'm loving the pastel matte paper in particular. So just paying attention to which side the light is coming from. It's why that's such a good photo reference to work from because you can clearly see that there's a sunlit side and a side that's more in shadow and that often makes for a really good painting if you can see the direction of the light really clearly. And that's definitely one of the things to look out for if you're choosing a photo reference to paint from. And in this piece, I also made use of my black stick, which is in this one, a new pastel, Prismacolor new pastel. That's N-U pastel. And this one was one of the top black pastels in my recent Blackest Black videos. And I literally tried every single black and compared them all. And the one that actually won was the Henri Rocher. It literally is the blackest thing that I've ever used. But I was still very happy with how the new pastel came out. And I've used it in this piece, in the blackest areas of his coat. And actually there's a little bit of a sparkle to this black, which I've noticed when I look at the finished painting in low light. And quite often you find that about soft pastel, that when you look at the pigment, how the crystals sit on the surface of the paper, you can always notice how the light really dances off of those crystals. But with this black in particular, there's a lovely little bit of a sparkle to it. And you can't really see it in this footage, but when you see the piece actually in person, and you look at it from different angles, it really does kind of sparkle and move a little bit. So yeah, I'm really happy with the Prismacolor new pastel. That's got to be my new favorite. So just working the rest of the body. And before I finish that paw, I just wanna block in the front of the sofa here, creating the shadow of the paw. Again, like I said at the start, working from background to foreground. So before I do the edges of the paw, it makes sense to me to fill in what's behind the leg first of all. And then the edges of the leg will sit nicely in front of that. So not going into too much detail on the fabrics here. In the photo reference, there's a little bit of texture to the blanket but no need to be so fussy with all of that. Just going for the nice colors, little bits of shadow where the folds are. And of course, creating that all important shadow on his paw. Then just to finish off the little details on the paw itself. So this really was a very satisfying painting to work on. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing it come together. If you have, I ask that you subscribe to me here on YouTube. I really appreciate any support you can show for my channel here. And also check me out on Patreon. The full length tutorials of this will be coming soon, but I've already got a huge catalog there for you to learn from. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this and until next time, happy pastling.